Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Today we've got some great compliance stories and our first story of the day is from Radiant Sheep. Try to cheat us out of our pay? I'll enjoy my bountiful CD collection. My first job out of college was as a broadcast engineer for a company that does contract work for radio stations all over the Midwest USA. Stations would hire us to work on their AM and FM radio equipment transmitters, feed lines, antennas, microwave antennas for studio audio feeds, etc., and their equipment in the studio. The company was started by an old guy who was very caring and valued in the industry for his expertise. He was my boss. He didn't go out on calls very often because of his age, but there were four of us and two teams who did the field work. We did everything from maintenance to new installations to emergency repairs. Back then, radio station transmitters had an automated phone dialer with a list of numbers to call if there was an issue. We were often the first number in the list. In the middle of the night, my coworker would get a call and a computer voice would say, this is KINI transmitter, transmitter is offline, error code 1234, press 7 to acknowledge, repeated 10 times. He would wake me up, we'd meet at the garage at 2am, hop in the work truck, and drive through a blizzard four hours to get this radio station back online. It was a fun job, but the middle of the night calls made it pretty horrible sometimes. The job also didn't pay too well because there isn't money in FM or AM radio anymore. But one bright spot is if we were out longer than 10 hours, we would get a big bump in pay via per diem. This was to pay for a hotel and any food we ate during the day. I was young and cheap, so I would usually spend less than half of my per diem and save the rest. My boss was in his 70s and he hired a friend of his to run the business side of the company. This guy, I'll call him Scott, was the kind of person who would be friendly to your face and then screw you over behind your back. Not that he was dishonest, just someone who didn't value people or relationships. One day, Scott decided that he could save the company money by forcing us to turn in receipts to be reimbursed for our per diem, instead of just getting the per diem in cash. We could spend up to the amount we were allotted, but we would only get reimbursed for what we actually spent. But the company was still charging clients the full amount of the per diem. This obviously pissed everyone off. The other guys were usually maxing their per diem spending on cigarettes, gas station snacks, and huge stakes at dinners, so they were annoyed at the hassle of keeping receipts and not being able to buy alcohol now via per diem, but I didn't smoke and tried to eat healthy. So instead, I bought movies and CDs at all the gas stations and truck stops. We had a week-long trip soon after the policy change, and I purchased the full DVD set of Firefly and all of the discography of Metallica. I turned in the receipts at the end, and the next morning Scott called me into his office. He asked what all of this was, and I explained that it was DVDs and CDs. He actually chuckled and said that's not what per diem is for, but somehow he saw the light and reverted the policy back to just giving us all cash per diem. Well, I for one think Scott needs to speak for themselves because those DVDs and CDs were delicious. In all seriousness though, if you're given a per diem, would you want to try to use as much of it as you could however you could? Or just whatever seems reasonable? Would you go out of your way to try to utilize all of it? Or just buy whatever keeps you satisfied as long as you can afford it? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is by Almion Tour. Won't deliver my full order? Have it your way. So I used to live on Azores and work as an adventure guide. In my work, we use action cameras to capture our guests in the moment. The Azores Island is the adventure's mecca. It's raw nature, waterfalls, etc. And it would be difficult and even dangerous to take pictures and videos while dangling in a rope from 30 meter high waterfalls during canyoning, for example. It also allows the guests to enjoy the activities 100%. Anyways, it was Black Friday and I found a great deal on a kit for water sports that included a case, hand straps, a floating handle, case, etc. from the same manufacturer of the action camera. So I know it's quality stuff. Here's the problem. Azores is a small island in the mid slash North Atlantic Ocean. So packages that get sent to this island sometimes take a month or more to deliver and it doesn't help that the local post carrier is terrible to deal with. Everything is handled manually, so things take time. So a month goes by, and I finally get a letter in the box saying I have a parcel waiting at the postal office. 
I grab my bike and make my way down to collect it. I get home and notice that half the stuff I ordered is missing for some reason. I jump on the customer support and ask why they hadn't delivered everything. They explain that there was a mistake, so I said that it was no worries. He could just send me the missing items and we call it a day. He said that this was a kit and he couldn't just send me the items separately for some reason. So I said okay, then just refund me for the missing items then. He then tells me that the items are worth more separately so we can't refund for the missing items. He then goes on to explain that in order for him to refund me, I would have to return the package that I already received and that way I could just reorder it again. However, I pointed out that now the kit sells for 25% more than what I paid for it. So how did he plan to solve that? He replies and says that he can't give me a coupon, but the best he could do was give me a 10 euro credit. But this still would mean that I'd have to pay more for the same kit. At this point, I was fuming and frustrated, so I just told him to email me a return label and tell him how terrible this experience has been. I hung up the phone and packaged up everything again, printed the label, and went back to the postal office to send it away. Cue malicious compliance. Because I really needed these items, I thought I might as well reorder it, just like the guy on customer support said, even if it cost a bit more this time. But this time, I decided I would gamble and order it from Amazon instead. You see, fellow Redditors, on my way home from the postal office, I remembered that I'd previously ordered other stuff from Amazon a few months prior, and I remembered that I was able to collect a full refund because they couldn't deliver on the set date, due to me living on a remote island and the local postal service took forever to deliver. I jump on Amazon, find out that the company has an Amazon store, I put all the items I needed and a little extra stuff that I wanted for my camera, and press order. And just as I thought, expected delivery two weeks from now, there's literally no way they can deliver that in time. Three weeks go by and I hop on Amazon to watch the status on my order. And wouldn't you know, a glorious little button has appeared saying that I'm eligible for a refund as the package seems to have gone missing. Fast forward one week later, I get a knock on my door. It's the delivery man from the postal service and a box with a smile in his hand. I thank him, close the door, and rip the parcel open. Everything's there. I received a full refund of 200 euros. And a week later, I got a full refund for the first delivery that I sent back, plus a credit of 10 euros to use on their website. So all in all, they lost almost 350 euros and camera gear worth around 200 euros instead of refunding me the difference or sending me the missing items. Thanks, I guess. Now, I don't live in a place that's remote necessarily, but I've had a very similar situation happen to me with Amazon too where they send something out, something went wrong in the delivery somewhere and it gets late and they say, your package appears to be missing, you can refund it. So I got the refund on the not insignificant priced item and then like maybe a week later, maybe half a week later, it actually just shows up out of the blue. Then you're faced with the moral dilemma, be an upstanding person and report it? or just keep the free item. Also, I'm curious about the back end of this. Does Amazon pay the refund if shipping is lost, or do they actually go and hold that money from going to the actual seller? Our next story is from Superman is the DR. Do you want a refund or not? So a couple of years ago, I bought a Fitbit watch from a large online marketplace. I mostly wanted to buy it from this site because they offered free two-day shipping. The day the watch is delivered, I get a photo to prove it was delivered. I see the picture of the package, and it's in front of my gate, which is painted bright green. Normally, packages are placed inside the gate. Why it was in front this time, I don't know. I was working from home, but was actually working, so I didn't see the email telling me the watch was delivered. A couple hours had passed by the time I went out there to get the package, but it was gone. I called the store and told them that the package was stolen, and that if there was something they could do. The lady said to look around and ask my neighbors to see if they took it. If it didn't turn up, to call back and they would send a replacement. Okay. I ask around, but nobody's seen it. I was alone at the house, but I asked my family if they saw a package. No one saw anything. After three days, I call back and they offer to send me a replacement. Perfect. It comes to the house about a week after the first watch was delivered. My mother-in-law comes by to have dinner that night. When she shows up, she hands me a package. It was the first watch. 
My mother-in-law had driven by a week earlier, saw the package, and grabbed it so no one would steal it. But she forgot to tell anyone, so she actually stole from me. Well, crap. I call the store and tell the customer rep what happened. She said she would talk to a supervisor and call me back. She doesn't that night, and I make a note to call back. A couple of days later, I get an unexpected package from this store. It's a third watch with an apology and a letter saying that they refunded my card for the full price of the watch. So now, I have three watches and my money back. I call them and ask to talk to a supervisor. I explain to them what happened, and the supervisor said that they would call me back. I get an email a couple days later with an apology and confirmation that they refunded my card the full price of the watch again. I call again, talk to a supervisor again, and explain what happened again. He asked if I wanted the refund of my card or store credit. I told him, no, you didn't hear what I said. He says, do you want a refund or not? I hung up the phone. I didn't call back since I didn't want to bankrupt the store. OP found a dupe glitch IRL. Just keep bothering this store and they'll just keep sending you more and more watches or more and more money. Something really got mixed up in translation here and I don't understand how this happened, but I guess now's the time for OP to open up an eBay store or make some posts on Craigslist or something. Our next story is from Pinto Bean Uchiha, if you say so. For some context, I'm a regional truck driver who's been working with my uncle driving one of his rigs for almost a year now. I live back and forth between Arizona, where my uncle lives, and California, where I live. My uncle has two big rigs, the one I drive and another old one he drives. Sometimes when I'm back home for longer than two days, he'll drive the one I usually drive. When I first started working with him, I would leave some stuff like a seat cushion, aux cable, a case of water, and other things I thought he would find useful while driving. This one time though, when I came back from having a few days off, he tells me, Hey OP, why do you leave all this stuff on the truck when you're gone when you know I'm gonna use it? I say, oh well, that's stuff I use when I drive, so I thought you'd like to use it too. They say, well that's you. I, on the other hand, don't like driving with these luxuries. So whenever you're gonna be gone for a few days or more, I want you to keep the truck clear as if you're leaving for good. It needs to be clear of all your stuff. Not sure why he referred to an aux cable as a luxury, but whatever, sure thing boss man. Recently, I bought a mini fridge since I started meal prepping again, but he hasn't seen it because, per his request, I make sure to take it back with me every time I go home. The few times I've driven with him, I've seen him keep some snacks on him in a lunch pail he puts in. One day, I got to my uncle's house with all my pre-made meals all boxed up, and my aunt, his wife, sees me and asks, What's all that? I say, just some pre-cooked meals I plan to take with me while I'm out on the road. That way, I eat out less and it's healthier. She says, oh nice, how are you going to store those though? I say, I bought a mini fridge at a truck stop that connects to a cigarette lighter, so I'm covered. A few days later, I'm having a casual conversation with my uncle on the phone when he tells me, so your aunt tells me you bought a mini fridge for the truck? I say, yeah, I started meal prepping and I got it so my food doesn't go bad. They're not that expensive, you should get one. With a defeated sounding, okay, I'll look into it, he changes the subject to something else. Not the juiciest malicious compliance story, but just thought I'd share it with you all on here. Considering the way they talked you down, it would definitely be very easy to withhold letting them use that mini fridge, but I feel like a part of me would still feel kind of guilty knowing that they're kind of excited or like open to the idea. There's something appealing that for a person who says, no, I don't need all those luxuries, to actually find something that they covet to add to their usual trucking routine. And our final story of the day is from Heavenbound925. College or McDonald's? An easy choice. I worked at McDonald's for a couple years. I actually enjoyed the job. Easy job, fun crew. I was promoted to crew trainer, a step below management, a bit of responsibility, a tiny raise, and you got to know the new crew as they were hired. It was fun. After a bit, I decided to take a few college classes. So I talked to the management about switching from closing to opening. Not a problem. They wanted me to know all aspects of the store as we were getting ready to promote me to management. I worked opening for a couple of weeks and owners needed our good managers at a failing location. But unfortunately, that meant sending those managers to our location. Within a couple days, the atmosphere changed and it was no longer a fun job. Three weeks in the management, 
new, started scheduling me closing shifts. So I sat down and talked with a new GM and explained I'm in college and needed to be on breakfasts and had been transferred there. She said, you are a crew trainer, you will work the shifts I schedule you. And I said, sorry, but prior management changed me to mornings. They say, you were hired for closing, you will work closing. I told her, again, I was in college and wasn't available. She said, you make a choice right now, your job or college. Ha! I smiled, walked to the register, punched out, handed her my name tag, and walked out with her screaming at me that I can't do that because I'm a crew trainer. Sorry lady, a part time job in McD's under bad management or college? Bye bye. Within 6 months all the original crew had quit and the place went to pieces. Needless to say, if they sent the management from a failing location to a more successful one as a way to find out if the actual issue is with the management, I think they succeeded in finding out the true issue. My only question is, if that was the case, why did it take them so long to figure it out? Like, why would they allow the whole place to burn down before they realize, yeah, this person is just tanking these locations? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy malicious compliance story, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.